Houdini 19.5 is out and it's brought a few new things to Solaris and Karma. So I want to take a look at some of the new things that it brings with it. So first of all, I'm just in the Solaris context. I've got a little bit of a scene set up here. All I've done is drop down a SOP create and some other stuff. We'll go over that here in a minute. But one of the first things that I wanted to show that's new inside of Houdini 19.5 is going to be this spheres, or sorry, the not the spheres, but particles rendering as spheres. So all I've done here is dropped in a sphere with some points from volumes and then an attribute randomized to give it some random P scale. And if I back out of, to the above context, you can see that we have our spheres here. And this is inside Karma, so this is your normal Houdini GL, and load up Karma, and you see that we have our spheres being displayed here, and this is Karma XPU. So this might have been in Karma CPU before, um, I don't remember, there's a bunch of new things to the both of them. And I've just added in a material library after this with a camera and a simple light. And then there's also this new Karma render settings, which I go ahead and type in Karma here. We still have this Karma selection that we can drop in. And that just brings in this new Karma render settings node and this new USD render wrap node. So these aren't, well, I guess this USD render wrap has probably been in the last one but the Karma render settings was not. It was a HDA, but they've renamed it to this and just changed some things apparently. So this is the new ROP or new Karma render settings, I should say. And you can just drop this in yourself too. So Karma render settings just right here. You don't have to drop in this Karma node if you don't want that USD ROP, which I don't necessarily want. So. I'll just drop in this render settings and we'll be good to go. And we can switch between our CPU and GPU. So there are some things that are not available in the uh, XPU. So just keep an eye out for some of those things. One of those things being curves. So if I go ahead and come over to this curve, looks like we have frozen up here. There we go. I go over to this curve, I've just drawn a simple curve in here. If I go ahead and back out of this, you see I have this Houdini console pop-up that says curve basis of Bezier is not currently supported by XPU. And if I bring up our documentation here, whoops, you can see that in the Karma section, we have all of these things that are new in 19.5. Uh, one of those being Karma now renders points, which we already talked about, and Catmull ROM curves. So not all of the curves, but specifically the Catmull ROM curves. So the way that we would need to get this set to be a Catmull ROM curve is if we go back to this SOP create, you come to this basic curves, we can select this, and then over here you see that we have some options that, that appear. And in this basis, we can right click and click edit property. Oops, and I'll go ahead and close that. And that brings up this edit curve node. And all this does, if I go ahead and reselect this, is allows us to change this setting. So it's currently set to Bezier, which doesn't work. If I set it to this Catmull ROM, you see that we have a curve set up here. So that's one simple way that you can just set this to uh, display your splines that you're, you're creating and they will actually render inside of XPU. The regular version of Karma, so the CPU, also will render them and I believe if I just go ahead and bypass that, they don't have a problem rendering the um, Bezier curves either. So just keep that in mind with what you're doing. You may have to actually change them to a Catmull ROM and go about it that way. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that for now and we'll take a look at the next thing, which is just a simple box here. I'll go ahead and zoom on in here. All it is is a simple box. And if I bring up our material library, you see we have this new Karma rounded edge um, option. So 
if I go ahead, you can just drop a new one in if you want. But a Karma rounded edge, and if I just pipe this into the normal, you're gonna see that if I zoom in here, we have, and let's go ahead, and I think this works in XPU. Let's set this back to XPU. Uh, I lied, okay, so it is only available in CPU. I couldn't remember for sure. But if I go ahead and just bypass this, you can see that we have this hard edge here along the corner of our object. And just setting that back, you see that it starts to kind of round out the edge here with the normal. It's a little bit hard to see, but it's definitely working. The rounded edge option is something that you can use. We also have a new option that we didn't have before. Go ahead, bring up our grid here. So with this grid, it's just a simple grid. And on our material, if I go ahead and have a texture piped into a height to normal. You can see that when we put this into the normal, we now have, it's kind of hard to see, but we now have normals inside of the Karma render. And if I go to XPU, see that it also works inside of XPU. Cleans up a lot faster. So the new normals are working inside of XPU as well, which is super nice to see. And that's something that was definitely uh, holding back, at least myself, I'm guessing a lot of people as well. So good to see that inside of Karma now as well. And then the last thing that I want to take a look at is this layout lop. So there's one new option for the layout lop, which I don't have a, anything to demonstrate this with, but there is this new option over here, which is the stack option. And it does exactly what it sounds like it would. You can draw on to your object and just stack objects up. And then you can use these other tools like we've had in the past to just move them around and fine tune things. But you can stack objects on top of each other, which is nice to see. I'm excited to see what other different options they come up with for the different brushes for this layout lot because this is super powerful and a lot more fun to use than trying to hand place everything. So a bunch of new stuff in Houdini 19.5. If you take a look at the documentation, uh, there's a couple other things I didn't go over which are good like this crypto mat lop for Karma CPU. Um, Oh, the other thing, which I actually do have an example of here. If we scroll back in our Houdini GL, and take a look at this light here. This light is actually not an area light, but it is a cylinder light. So we didn't have cylinder lights before, so you can use that option if you would like now as well. But there's a ton of new things in here, so just kind of scroll through the different options or different improvements, I should say. Um, there's new stuff like uh, subsurface scattering, is random walk specifically through Material X, which is good to see. I don't use that too often, but uh, it's definitely something that's going to be needed in the future. They reworked sampling, um, improved some lighting things here as well as some different shading stuff, the new Karma Ocean Lop. Uh, there's also a Curvature VOP, which I struggled to get working a little bit, but it uh, shouldn't be too difficult to get going. This is pretty good. If you need to set your OCIO transform manually, you can. You now have a VOP to do that, which is good, um, but that I think that will probably only work with uh, CPU, if I had to guess. FOPs are supposed to be more CPU than the XPU. Uh, there's the Material X color correct node, which is actually something good to go over. So this color correct, Material X color correct, it just puts everything into this one node, which is good. Uh, Material X definitely needs a good color correction thing, which I believe this is Houdini specific, if I remember correctly, which brings me to another point. Anything that is um, Houdini specific has a different icon here. So Material X all have these blue and pink icons, except for the ones that are Houdini specific have this Houdini logo next to the, the Material X icon. So if you're wanting to transfer your shaders and your whole scene, between different programs, make sure that you're not using any of these Houdini specific nodes because they will not transfer. 
just a, a good note there. So yeah, a bunch of new stuff in here. There's also some different things in Solaris, Solaris that are new. So take a look at all the different things and let me know what excites you the most about the, the new updates. Definitely like to see a lot of these changes coming into Solaris. I kind of held off on using it extensively before just because Karma wasn't super ready and there were still some things that kind of bothered me about it but um, I'm enjoying seeing these new updates to it. So we'll have to revisit this. I definitely want to take a look further into XPU and see some different testing, see what I want to do in terms of using that. Currently I use Redshift to drive most of my rendering, but I might be thinking about switching with the new updates to XPU or at least using it for certain things. I probably won't abandon Redshift completely, but XPU is definitely bringing a lot to the table now. So anyways, I do have an, other videos on Houdini, so if you want to learn more about Houdini, make sure to check those out. I do cover some stuff on Redshift uh, in that as well, so if you want to learn Redshift inside Houdini, make sure to check those out. I do have some stuff on Cinema 4D, Octane, and Clarice as well, so if any of that interests you, then make sure to check those videos out. But anyways... We've got a bunch of other stuff coming on Karma and 19.5. I guess mostly 19.5, taking a look at the different features. And like I said, I will be testing XPU more. We'll see what my decision is on that. But stay tuned for all of that. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Check out 19.5 and have a good day.